Now that takes us to chapter 9. Look at Isaiah 9. And this is a great verse that you should have underlined in your Bible and maybe even choose for one of your devotionals. Chapter 9, verse 6. Isaiah said to Ahaz, Trust God, fear not, instead of fearing the Assyrians, trust the coming Messiah who fulfills God's promises. Here's the promise he'll fulfill. For unto us a child is born, verse 6, unto us a son is given. The government will be upon his shoulder. I love it. It's singular. We have shoulders. And if Jesus is going to, you know, reign over the whole world, you'd think he'd need both shoulders to shoulder the load. He only needs one. <laughs> He's so mighty. And his name will be called, and here's this series of Hebrew words, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. What, what are those titles? Jesus is the Wonderful Counselor. Look at what his life was like. Matthew records that he came into his own country, he taught them in their synagogue, and they were astonished when Jesus taught. And they said, where did this man get this wisdom? He, even in his humanity, walking around as, as a 100% man, astounded people. He's the mighty God. Think about it. Jesus spoke to dead people that had been dead for four days. Do you know why Lazarus, why Jesus waited? When you get to the Gospel of John, you'll learn this. Why did Jesus tarry when they sent word that Lazarus had died? Because the Jewish people thought this was their tradition, kind of like we have folk tales, we believe. They believed that when a person died, you, you kept him around because their body was there, but their spirit hovered around for three days. And then it went away. And so... Jesus waited until every Jewish person who had this improper belief that the spirit separated from the body and hovered over the body for three days, he waited three full days, and he came on the fourth day. And what did he do? He spoke, and Lazarus rose to life. Wow, that's a mighty God. He spoke... Like no one else had ever done, he talked to the storms and the wind and the waves, and they fell to silence. In fact, John 5 says, and I love this, Bonnie and I, uh, I love to go to cemeteries. We, we go and find the graves of the great servants of the Lord, like John Newton and Adoniram Judson and, and you know, other great servants of the Lord. When I stand in the graveyard, I always think of John chapter 5. It says, marvel not for the hours coming into which all that are in the graves will hear my voice and come forth. Do you know why Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth? If he just had said, come forth, everybody would have resurrected in the whole world at that moment. That's how powerful he is. It also says he's the everlasting father in Isaiah 9. What does that mean? Jesus shows us what God's everlasting arms. Do you know what Deuteronomy 33, 27 says? Underneath are the everlasting arms. God wants to hold us through life. Jesus shows us what the everlasting Father's arms look like. He shows us what God's presence is in Matthew 28, 20. Jesus says, I'm with you all the time. He kept showing up after the resurrection to remind them. He shows us what everlasting consolation is. Uh, he offers us his love, his comfort, his consolation. And finally, the last name in Isaiah 9 is he's the Prince of Peace. What does that mean? The Bible defines that. John 14, 27, I can give you peace, Jesus said, in your deepest trials. Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't be afraid. He can give us peace with people. That's Ephesians 4, 3. He can give us peace to the very end of life. He gives us hope, peace, comfort. 